Welcome back, Retro MTB fans, to the to DB's Retro MTB workshop. And no introductions, no formalities, no reveals today. Uh, those of you who follow me on Instagram will have seen that this build has been pending. It's been six months, eight months in the waiting since I actually bought this. Coming up eight months, January, I think I bought this off eBay uh, from Italy, but, uh, shipped to the UK. It was in pretty decent shape for a 30 odd year old bike but it needed a respray it was the paint was pretty choppy and the the decals were pretty um were pretty uh were pretty bad but uh no dishonor to the to previous owner um it, it just was at that point where it wasn't in a bad enough state um it was in too bad a state possibly to keep it i wanted to make it a, a really stand out uh, build uh, dream spec and so you know the authenticity again some hardcore will say you shouldn't have removed the paint but you know the, the decals were, were underneath the paint if you're going to do it properly and uh, I, I just felt that we could with such a paint scheme the Grello as it's uh, affectionately known from the Fat City Cycles with the blue I thought it would be pretty easy to uh, replicate um, the paint job that's been done is absolutely immaculate. A beautiful job done by Argos Cycles in uh, Bristol in the UK. Initially, the guys there, to be fair to them, said, do you know what? I don't know if we're going to be able to match that. It's not a standard colour. We all know about the paint science from uh, the 1990s. It was very different to what it is now. It's not a standard fluoro colour, and they were going to have to make a custom mix. Uh, they did that. They made a custom mix. Um, they sent me a sample. It was to the eye. It was as good bang on as it could, was ever going to be, and um, and yeah, we uh, we, um, we we got it made. And the blue fade was a bit simpler. That kind of um, the metallics are all spot on, and the fade they've done is a wonderful job. And so now it's ready for a build. First couple of items have gone in. Um, oh, by the way, decals, they came from uh, Velo decals in the US. These were, uh, this is exactly as it matched uh, the factory, the original, um, in terms of location of all the necessary skull and crossbones and the team fat stuff, the single one, notorious for being on the left hand seat stair. So, yeah, that's all good. Uh, Massachusetts built um, frame. From the original factory to 91 frame size medium um i think it's in the sort of low hundreds in terms of build number um and then so the first problem was it wasn't a problem but it needs to be replaced was the bottom bracket and as i discovered on fat chance as it was with klein's depressing uh, bearings aren't tricky to find but there are some good and some bad versions i was from all the information I looked at, this is a fill wood. So from California, I ordered the spindle and the bearing sets. They're supposed to be the best of the best. So um, for you know a few couple hundred dollars, I think it was, with shipping, uh, thought I might as well get that right. Argos Cycles in Bristol both. Um, I've never fitted a press fit bottom bracket before, so they did it for me just to avoid me chipping the paint and ruining it before I'd even got it home which is very lovely of them. Uh, the only thing I've done so far is fit the um, roller. So it's a bottom pull, is that right? Yeah, bottom pull, top pull. Whatever it is, it needs a roller. And um, so this was one that I procured from a fellow retro MTB fan from uh, the uh, Retro Bike Forum. Uh, so that's in a very delicious blue. Um, and yeah, so it's time to effectively get on and start to build it and I'm going to piece it together and come back. All the parts are effectively here and have been collected. So I mean, this is going to be a quick build and um, I've been sitting on the parts and building up the parts required for um, for some time. And I've been desperately waiting to get on it, get it built and get, get it ridden. So join me as we progress. Oh, I should say, I missed the most obvious thing um, of all things, which is the delicately going to put that there and of course this is a team fat chance yo eddy for those of you you know, already noticed that but for those of you who are maybe new to the fat chance or vaguely remember 
the product range. This was the uh, this was the one came in many different colours. The Aqua Fade is a popular one, all full Grello, which is the green yellow here, as you see here. Um, and then there was this kind of dipped um, chain stays and fork um, blue version, which actually I think I read somewhere was a prototype um, paint scheme, which then went on to be either ordered by customers or or what have you. So, but uh, certainly one of my favourite ones. I love the green and blue. Um, and yeah, looking forward to building it. So join me as we get further down the track. All right, you join me at stage two uh, of the build. So we're kind of up to control seating, chassis and cranks. Um, as I already explained, the the Phil Wood US press bearings and spindle had already been put in. I think it's 127 mil spindle. Uh, that was a bit of a guess on my part. I thought the one in before was possibly a little bit too short. These collars have now gone on to stop the spindle. Um, the plan being that it stops the spindle moving inside those those press bearings. Um, so that's done. Uh, that's the original seat collar, I believe. We've gone for a Synchro seat post flight stem. I love Synchro stuff. It's just so good. It just, just it was so well made, the early Synchro um, stuff, and I've disproportionately overspent on that. Seat post, I can tell you that. Flight saddle, uh, still as comfortable as they ever were. Uh, the Rolls Royce in many ways of, uh, of of saddles and all was on all of my bikes. And uh, that's, I think they picked this up one second hand, still the writing, it's not NOS. Um, it's got a red Salatali on it. Um, <clears throat> up front, we've got a Salsa um, elevated roller stem one inch uh, steerer tube as it always was with, with the with the uh, team fat chance you um and really i needed this i mean i've had many stems which i bought for this i had some syncross flat zero degree rise 150 mil reach which looked lovely and with the original noodle as well to uh channel the the uh, brake cable down but for my aching bones uh, and a man of a certain age just with such a short head tube this is a medium it's kind of essentially the same geometry as my pace um the reach and um the way in which this works but it's just so small up front the head tube just hasn't got the height so I've put some spaces in there and then with that on top and i think i'll just be able to get comfortable on that uh when i'm riding it but this was uh and if you check out the fat chance fat city Sync cycles catalogs of the time this was the stem that was offered um and again disproportionately expensive i have to say in this day and age very difficult to get my hands on one of those i waited for months for one to pop up and then no one was um the buyer certainly wasn't dropping his price and it was just going to sit there so before anyone got my got their hands on it i felt it was the right thing to do was to procure it to keep it in line with the factory options that were offered at the time um there are other options i can put on there syncross just to 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 continue the theme which, as you can see here, um, I've done a couple of videos, I think, on these cranks. Bought in Japan, they were in a right state uh, since I've, um, I've re-coated them, um, repainted them, new decals, because they were all, and there was rusty. But actually, the spider and the bolts were in pretty good condition. These are the bolts that came with it, uh, the one I bought. Um, and actually, these uh, chain rings haven't got synchros chain rings on, haven't gone for paste chain rings. But these are a um, Black Spire a period Canadian chain ring. So these would have been a Canadian aftermarket in keeping with the Syncross, American Canadian type vibe. So um, yeah, I may get some Syncross um, ones at some point. XJR was another option, but I stuck with these and the, they're looking pretty, pretty sweet right now. Talking of XJR, so up front, I've already mounted um, a couple of things on here. So the XJR, these were again, 91, uh, spec 90, uh, this is a 91 frame, so this is a kind of late 91 build. In that, these were uh, the XJR M900 uh, integrated shifters. Um, didn't think about thumb shifters, but I haven't, I've got those on, I haven't got any XJR on um, any of my other builds and thought, you know what, I'm going to go for it. So, I also have the front derailleur, I also have the rear derailleur, uh, which is going to match those, which is fantastic. Now, bars, this was an interesting one. So, I do have a set of Hyperlites, which I managed to get in black, lovely as they are, answer uh, Hyperlites of the time. A little bit wider, which would make them a bit more comfortable, but these were just too good an opportunity to, to, to miss. 
for those of you who don't know, the steel tubing that these were made uh, from, the Fat City Cycles bikes, were um, a true temper steel, which is a manufacturer, like a Reynolds in the UK. Um, and so I found this bar. It's not the lightest. It's probably very strong. Um, but, you know, with the, with the true temper call out and shout out there, um, I thought that was the right thing to do. Obviously, as I said in the catalogue, these bikes were made up with various group sets, XTR, Salsa, these Salsa stems, but ultimately you could buy the frame and do whatever you liked. So again, um, Fat City did do a handlebar. I have seen some of those up for sale. Um, or seen them on other, on other riders' bikes and on other builds, but you know, I felt this was a period correct, uh, spec correct, uh, tubing correct, US correct uh, for the build. And so that's where we're at with that. And that's about it for now. Um, it's getting dark here. Probably going to call it a day today. Um, I was as excited as I am. One of the problems I know I'm going to face is on the um, is the ferrules for these. I believe some Klein ones might fit. But anyway, I need to experiment. I had the same problem on the um, on the Alpine Stars, although the previous owner did help me out. Recycles, thanks, Reese, um, and did warn me about the, the ferrules because being a reasonably amateur builder, I um, didn't. Um, I didn't foresee an issue with that, but uh, something I definitely need to consider. So yeah, hopefully you're liking that. Join me when it's uh, rolling on its wheels and we can talk a bit more about some of the other components. What's next? I think wheels, pedals, and yeah, I guess we can, then we'll have to start thinking about cables and, and brakes. Oh, and the grips, of course. But uh, yeah, uh, it's exciting stuff. All See right. you soon. We are back and uh, the wheels are on. So what have we gone for and what are we doing? Uh, well, remarkably, I was able to get my hands on this set of uh, NOS, new old stock, unused Mavic MA40s. You can see there, so they're completely unused. Uh, which is tricky because uh, we all know that they lose their braking surface once they're used and that's going to obviously make it look terrible. So I don't know what I'm going to do about that. But they are being laced to a set of M900 XTR um, hubs matching, of course. Um, also, these, while not NOS, remarkable to find them in this condition with the, um, with the decals not polished off. That was a that was an absolute must. They're finished off with some ring glare, ringle, say it how you want. Um, skewers again uh, rocking horse poo is easier to find than a set of these that haven't been completely abused or um, have lost certain components and parts of them so yeah that is um, that is essentially the wheel set and these mythos tires just you know I think that sort of red caramel walled uh, tire is something I don't know I just always feel like Klein's and American bikes seems to have them uh, Mythos aren't necessarily an American make, uh, IRC I should say aren't an American make, they're a Japanese make, but these are a set of tyres I had, they I think they fit, again, every rider chose individually the tyres that they wanted, um, yeah. it wasn't anything that was necessarily specified, maybe Porcupines, if you could have got them at the time, would have possibly been the ones that would have ended up on here, but also I've, you know, I would, as a personal choice, I always go for a Panarese, uh, smoke and, uh, smoke light, smoke and smoke, smoke and dart, so, you know, tyres change. Uh, they're one of those consumables that, you know, it's very difficult to get one find originally and brand new uh, that aren't ruined, but also get them right for the period. But these are a period tyre. I'll probably also have uh, run some smokes, smoke lights. I've got a, a pair of folding smoke light black wall uh, 1.9s as well, which took me a while to find. But I like a wall. I like a skin wall on this period of bike. I think black walls, while they were being used, they were quite new and quite... Uh, at the time were not necessarily to everyone's taste but I don't know there's something about a skin wall on a bike of this age which uh, or a gum wall or, a, or whatever you want to call it which feels about right but that's where we are with uh, wheel set now on so it's a rolling chassis as you can see well so I had a did I add these yeah I think I went for these um, so an XT pair these are new again new old stock so you'll see the original grease in there uh, new old stock uh, XT SPDs, which again were no XTR, so these were the top of the range um, at the time. Uh, I've DX on all my others. These are just a slightly slimmer, slightly lighter uh, version of that. Can't beat them. Uh, no reason to change them. I always ran X, I always ran SPDs um, 
which is quite nice with these when I was in period and uh, so no reason to change there. Um, I think if I was being completely the scrutineers were going to get their pencils out I think this is an XT block and not an XTR block um, so that'll be marked down if it was ever going to be any uh, any of my cartel friends Ollie mentioning no names Red Dread um, you know being prepared to uh, pick pick holes and pick bones then you might want to look closely at that with your pencil and notepad but other than that um, yeah the build's all right this is at its most extreme point i haven't gone past the maximum height it's uh it's right on that level and it's quite extreme geometries as uh as you already know but as was the case where this super short stacked head tube which i've tried to count out with this i may even try so i've got a synchro stem just to f just so we get the holy the holy trinity of uh stem crank and bar combo but it's no biggie if it doesn't. Um, I think the salsa, as I said, is a catalog item. It was that's how the Fat Chances and Fat City Cycles were advertised with a roller salsa stem of the time, uh, steel, one inch diameter. Yeah. So next up will be pretty much you know front mech, rear mech, brakes. Contro controversial on the brakes. So it'll be interesting to see what people think of those uh, front mech and rear mech I'll, I'll disclose now is XTR M900 of the time in beautiful condition I never had a bag of XTR, full XTR ones so that's going to be good brakes are slightly different uh, so we'll see what you think about those and then we'll be uh, getting it cabled up and uh, ready to roll but uh, yeah join me later